In this video in our How To GAN series, the basic techniques for using GAN transistors in high performance power conversion is discussed. GAN transistors generally behave like power MOSFETs but at much higher switching speeds and power density. In this video, we will focus on how to drive a GAN transistor to achieve maximum performance. The critical design considerations to achieve maximum performance from GAN transistors are a need to regulate the gate voltage to avoid an overvoltage condition on the transistor gate. For general purpose GAN drivers, the speed of the driver needs to be matched to the size and speed of the device being driven. This is achieved by controlling the turn on and turn off. Third, minimizing the gate power loop inductance. And fourth, the gate driver design must be immune to noise induced changes. To begin the discussion on the switching behavior of GAN transistors, we examine the various switching properties of the device. This plot shows the gate to source voltage on the vertical axis as a function of gate charge given on the horizontal axis. QGS1 is the charge required to increase the gate voltage to the threshold voltage of the device. QGS2 is the charge required to commutate the device current. QGS is the charge required to increase gate voltage from zero to the plateau voltage. QGD is the charge required to commutate the device voltage, at which point the device enters the linear region. QG is the total amount of gate charge that must be supplied to increase the voltage from gate to source to the desired voltage. It can be seen in this example that just above 8 nanocoulombs of charge is needed to bring the gate voltage from 0 to 5 volts, which will ensure that the device is fully turned on. Here we can see the device on resistance on the vertical axis versus gate voltage on the horizontal axis for a 100 volt EGAN FET. It's possible to drive these enhancement mode devices with gate voltages as low as 4 volts without a significant increase in RDS on. Furthermore, it's recommended to keep the gate driver voltage below 5.25 volts to allow enough margin between the gate voltage and the absolute maximum gate voltage of 6 volts. The full recommended gate voltage range is shown in this rectangular box. These recommended gate voltage limits can be readily achieved by near critical damping of the gate drive turn on power loop. To achieve near critical damping of the gate drive turn on power loop, it's necessary to minimize the gate loop inductance and adjust the series resistance to limit overshoot. For the gate drive voltage falling edge, the negative voltage limit does not present any practical limitation. It's therefore possible to drive the GAN transistor faster at turn off and allow some negative ringing. Shown on this oscillogram is an example of an enhancement mode transistor gate drive voltage. This shows a critically damped voltage rise of less than half a volt and a slightly underdamped voltage fall. Ground bounce is a common phenomenon in the world of high speed logic. Unfortunately, these ground bounces can lead to unintended switching, degraded performance, and can potentially damage devices. An ideal example in figure A shows the gate drive in close proximity to the GAN transistor to minimize common source inductance. By tying the gate drive return directly to the source of the GAN device, the source side layout inductance is pushed outside the gate drive loop. Any voltage pulses across this source inductance will cause the logic and controller ground to bounce relative to the source of the power device and thus the ground of the gate driver. 
large pulses can change the logic state of the gate driver input and thus negatively impact a GAN power device. The best way to avoid ground bounce is to place the controller on the same ground as the gate driver as shown in figure B. In applications with multiple low side switching devices, there are two ways to address ground bounce as shown here. First, the ground bounce noise can be filtered out by placing a small RC low pass filter between the controller and the gate driver as seen in figure A. The second alternative solution is to use a level shifter or isolator between the controller and gate driver as shown on the right in figure B. The ecosystem of gate driver ICs suitable for enhancement mode GAN transistors has seen exponential growth in recent years. These drivers meet the various requirements detailed in this presentation and many are specifically aimed at key GAN applications. For example, radiation resistant GAN compatible gate drivers are available for space and high reliability applications and drivers that support one nanosecond pulse widths are well suited for LiDAR applications. In summary, gate drive considerations for enhancement mode GAN transistors are for both low side drivers and especially high side drivers, there is a need to regulate the gate drive supply voltage to avoid an overvoltage condition on the transistor gate. The ideal range to drive the devices without significant increase in on resistance is between 4 volts and 5.25 volts with an absolute maximum of 6 volts. Furthermore, it is preferred to have separate pins for turn off and turn on in order to adjust both independently for optimum damping. Also, the gate driver should be designed to minimize the gate power loop inductance between the VDD supply capacitor and the power devices. This will minimize gate driver rise time and maximize driver DIDT. Last, the gate driver design should be made with the assumption that the driver ground and the controller ground can differ significantly and the input logic pin must be immune to noise-induced changes in the logic state. For more detailed information about gate drive design for GAN transistors, please see the third edition textbook, GAN Transistors for Efficient Power Conversion, or view more videos in the How To GAN series. And for more information on GANFETs and IC products and evaluation kits, go to epc-co.com.